lot of support in Down Patrick. Um, the Russell Gillick Union had their football team and their hurling team. We had a soccer team called Ruth Kelter. They folded. And then we had Down Rack, who were a very successful team. We had a hockey club with, in those days, four teams going out every Saturday. Cricket club, four teams every Saturday. The winter time then in the local clubs, table tennis, badminton, snooker, billiards, darts, the usual, there was a lot of sport. Sports were always down, Patrick, in the area around the whole of Lakeal, and that was always a great sports area. There were people interested in horses and show jumping, there were people interested in dogs. There's a photograph there somewhere of a, uh, an old row of low houses and called Saltbox Row. And I remember Frankie Ray had a great dog called Saltbox Row, which, which won regularly in Celtic Park and was of a great standby for the punters in, 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 in uh, Patrick Evans in the 1930s. But you know, dogs was, it was a big thing. Soccer, not so much rugby, never to the same extent took on in Down Patrick, but it was a great cricket town. Well, the Down Patrick Cricket Club did um, have some big matches played in our ground, international matches. West Indies, the Australians, New Zealanders. The Senior Cup final is played there every year. Brings a lot of people from all over Ireland, actually, to the matches there. Um, there's been some wonderful players coming to Down Patrick Cricket Club, actually, to go on to represent their country. One of the most notable ones, if I can mention the name here, would be Noel Ferguson, one of the best cricketers I've ever seen coming out of Down Patrick. The cricket club in Down Patrick here be well over a hundred years of age. And what happened in those days, a lot of the mills, the mill towns like Warrenstown, Lurgan, Portadown, these mills were bought by English landlords who came over here. Uh, they opened up these mills, built a few houses for the mill people to live in, and they always had a cricket ground. It's about 1973 or thereabouts. The notion of a folk club wasn't um it wasn't a particularly Irish thing, um, but a gentleman called John Watterson had been uh, studying over in Manchester, and the folk club concept would have been big in the north of England. So we had our own wee session going here in Down Patrick, and uh, we thought, why not import this notion of a folk club? And I remember the, the, the seed was sown on the back of a blue Triumph Toledo. Uh, that why don't we start our own folk club? Well, it's, it was quite remarkable um, how popular it became. Uh, people were travelling, an awful lot of the early members uh, actually travelled from Belfast and further afield. Um, it became quite a phenomenon. Um, over the years, uh, it was an existence, it was a case of um, what big names didn't play in the club, you know. It, it really had um, an amazing reputation. It still surprises me that when I meet people um, out and about all over the country, when they hear Down Patrick, they say, oh, do you, do you anything to do with Down Patrick Folk Club? So it really it did uh, establish a great reputation. You know? And most of the people who came to play carried back great, um, great stories and, and uh, tales of the, of the reception they had in Down Patrick. You know? We managed to buy what was the old RAF club down in Pillarwell Lane, and with a lot of volunteer labour, we we uh, we did the premises up, applied to be registered formally as a club that we could open our own bar. So then, usually once a week, we invited you know we brought along special guests, and the club itself held about a hundred people or thereabouts. But for the bigger names, we then would have. Um, gone to other venues. For example, the Chieftains played in De La Salle Secondary School in the Sports Hall. There were 1,100 people at that. Um, Plankstey were in, again, De La Salle Secondary School. You know, we had Paul Brady, Andy Irvine, um, just all the, the Dannon, you know, all the big names. Uh, Alton, of course. Remember, famously, we'd booked Clannad to play at Castle Ward for the princely fee of £400. And just before the gig happened, their single Harry's game went to number one in the English charts. So that was the end of <laughs> They weren't coming to Castle Ward for 400 quid, you know. 
But uh, yeah, I mean, all the, all the great names, Paddy Keenan, Leon Flynn, just endless uh, of the major names in Irish traditional music. Last year, we uh, ran a memorial concert for Lawrence Montague, who was a, an original member, a great musician, just all around good guy. And Paul Brady very kindly came and gave his services for free, along with a number of the local musicians from here in Newcastle, Castle Wellen. And there was a lot of talk that night about, you just saw all the old faces back again. So there was a lot of talk about, it's a shame that we, you know, we're not getting together. So I think there might be something stirring in the undergrowth, you know. Well, it probably took uh, a long time to close. It was a fantastic concept for the 70s and 80s. Uh, and an awful lot of people had traveled you know, we're travelling from Belfast. Then there was more concern about drink driving and things like that. And other venues were attracting our people. And uh, to be honest, when I look back at it, we didn't, the, the one big failure was we didn't really connect with our immediate community. Well, it's, uh, you see, if people come, uh, if people have to spend an hour travelling to work in the morning and another hour travelling to work, back at night, you know, it, it actually reduces the amount of time they have for, for social interaction and there's a good lead less than that. Uh, and there's also, I think, been a movement away from the, the pub to the club, you know, particularly the sporting club of, of one sort and another. Uh, so that I don't think people, except at the weekends, I don't think people um, probably get together as, as, as much as they did, you know, but it's... Uh, it's one of the factors of being, a, if you like, a semi-dormitory town, you know. The town hall would have had dances, yes, but they did more variety shows. Edmund Heath, the hypnotist, would have been there. Brady Gallagher, the singer. They did more of that down in the town hall. The Cannons Hall would have been dances, school concerts. And I think belonging to the local parish in those days, they had a drama group and they would have had uh, some play or something on coming up to Christmas. There was a minor hall beside it, which was called the minor hall. There were three or four billiard tables in there, so that's where the men gathered at night time. We had a good time. There were plenty of dances, there was a cinema, there was always a cricket ground to go to practice. We, we, we did have a good time. Um, obviously there wasn't the traffic and all about the roads. We went to dancers and bicycles and what have you, but we did have a good time. You had to be very careful where you parked your bicycle because <coughs> it mightn't have been there when you come back out again. You had to be very careful. But usually the boys come in from the country. They had a, an aunt or a relative in Down Patrick and the bike was left there until the dance was over. And then if they were leaving the girl home, she might have been home on the bar of that bicycle. If she lived in Down Patrick, obviously they walked her home and they went back and collected their bicycle. The <clears throat> Cannons Hall, um, back in the 60s, accommodated quite a few of the big show bands. I mean, Dickie Rock, Brenton Boyer, all those boys played in the Cannons Hall. It was a, it was a big thing on a Sunday night. And those days, you didn't all mingle together. One side of the hall was all men, the other side was all women. And when the band said, we're going to have a foxtrot, well, you'd already picked the girl you were going to go and dance anyway. But by the time you got over to her, somebody else had got her. So it was all luck if you got the girl you wanted to dance with. The Canvas excursion was a great occasion, actually. It was the beginning of July every year. And you've got to remember, uh, the children had very few holidays at that time. Families didn't take holidays. Nobody was even going to Butlins, not to mind the cost of rabbit, you know. And um, this is the only chance these kids got, really, of something. And the idea was to take them for a day to Newcastle. And of course, the train suited it very well. So you get about a thousand children from all the Catholic schools would march down the street with, with bands and banners and all the rest of it. And uh, they would be seen off in the morning and then they would come back in the town to be there to welcome them back in that evening. And it was a, it was a, a huge sort of joyful experience. And the, and the great man at the time, of course, was Callum McWilliams, a very forceful character. And you're never sure whether he was doing this uh, because he, 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 he liked the kids 
or because he wanted to show the people in Newcastle where he had previously been parish priest that he was now in a much bigger parish, you know. <laughs> we dressed up, we had to go to the primary school. It was on June sometime it was. We had to dress up and prayed we up to the school for a certain time. We just prayed it down to the bus stop and we got on the buses and it was in Newcastle, we had to get off the buses, we prayed it. We were all assembling up the section. Some of them had to go up to the field. You know, we marched on down in town, off the Newcastle. And then we uh, prayed back up again, in the field, had our lunch, prayed back down to the, to the beach, and then assembled, and then we, had, we, we did a shop. We did run about the shops, no one played around the beach. And then we had to get ready for a certain time. We had to get under our sections again, pay it up, and get the buses into St. Patrick. But the excursion was really brilliant. It was just like a, a family day out. The Cannons excursion was a trip we had the second week, the Thursday of the second week in July. All the local Catholic schools would have assembled at the football pitch at St Dillon's Avenue and marched through Down Patrick down to the bus station. Double decker buses took us all to Newcastle and we paraded around Newcastle and we had a day out on Newcastle Beach. That probably was the only time of the year we got to Newcastle on that particular day. Now, I thought the, the people at Down Patrick were, the shopkeepers in Down Patrick were mad to do the excursion because they, they collected money to send all their kids to Newcastle, so they could spend their pocket money in the shops in Newcastle, which they could very well have done in the shops in Down Patrick. I know it was a great, a great occasion.